it's not quite as cold. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, it's, it's um, like 45, it's 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. Yeah. And not windy. And not windy. Which is also quite wait important. wait just a couple more minutes, it's like you'll have sun. Right sun now. on my spot. <laughs> We're running a little late this morning. You didn't scare any deer off the driveway this morning? No deer off the driveway. Yeah, yesterday there was a bunch when Don went down and back and then I saw them and then I saw them again and they were really hanging around yesterday. Yeah. But no deer, although I just about ran over a squirrel. Does that count? <laughs> Cut in front of me. I heard him. I heard some noise down there. That's why I guess that's why I asked about the deer. Don and I right now are thinking that this is the uh, best spot in the house. <laughs> Been working on my Lego project and I came out here to see if he was around then. He did not disappoint. Hi. It would be slightly more convenient if you were here in the morning when everyone else was here for breakfast, but I'm willing to work with you. Hi. Hi. Um, I guess I'm going to start out by saying I had a little bit of disappointment this morning because if I had enough bricks to finish this, it would be finished and obviously it's not finished. And let's just leave it there and say some bricks are on the way and maybe I'll get them before Thanksgiving because I'm kind of on a, in a holding pattern. I have to fix that until then. Um, obviously though, I still got a lot done. I've got my floor, uh, placed on the second story or actually the third story. And I finished the porch on both sides, uh, the floor and the railings there. Um, it did not have this railing, but I had to add it because, well, it wasn't safe for the minifigure man to walk out there. Uh, he could have fallen. I have added a couple of windows on the um, second floor and the first floor and that so if I want to put some LED lights through there to light up the inside of the house I have an easy access point for a couple of LED lights. And let's see, um, I got my cat on the bed, you know, I got to have a mouse and a cat in every one of my buildings and the mouse is down here in the stairwell and the cat is on the bed like usual so we're good there. I've got my window treatments ready for these windows, but I just um, can't put them on yet. I switched out the bed color. I mean, I've been working on it a long time, actually. It's just um, all stuff that needed to be done, but not what I thought I was going to do this morning. Um, there are some of these round pieces that I didn't have enough of, and... Um, that was really the main, and these white pieces for the window sills. Those were the main two things that there was nothing I could do to overcome that. That was going to look right. So, um, I, will I start something else while I wait on the other pieces? I don't know. Probably. Um, I don't know what exactly that's going to be yet. Obviously, Don and I picked blue for the awning that matched the floors, the floor in the toy part of the shop. And, um... I think there's another toy I might build to go outside. Maybe that's what that square was for, but I would probably move it over here somewhere. We'll see. Um, anyway, it's coming along. I can't really complain except for <laughs> having to order more parts again. We're making a really exceptionally long trip today. I thought we were going to the environmental park. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're just going to the environmental park. We figured we should walk around the most closest, most local park we have, and we haven't done that in a long time. Right, it's probably been um, three years at least since we've walked around the park. We've been in the environmental park several hundred times, but in the parking lot. Right. But we're gonna actually get out of the car. We're gonna park the car. And get out. Get out. <laughs> what a novel concept. So when we had that deluge of rain last week, they did lose a tree or two over here and um, They've come and they've taken off half, carted off half of what was sitting over here, but they've got to obviously come back for another round. The, t the town handles that. This is technically in the city limits, speaking of the town. So Don's plan is to uh, walk around with me and then go for his run while I play my Pokemon. So he's got his running clothes on. So here's a map of the trails. Um, the creek that runs through here, it's called Kenneth Branch. And uh, that would be what the little creek in our yard 
runs off into obviously we're here at the parking lot we usually take persimmon path over here to kenneth crossing and get on the heritage trail and follow it back out over here um you get to the end and then you can't go any farther when you go underneath the high power lines and that's all good uh if you walk out far enough this way you'll end up at our carport you gotta walk for a pretty good ways though and um i've done it once or twice when we had snow days it's kind of pretty to do if it's uh, the ground's covered in snow we haven't ever walked a lot over here uh this maybe i've done this white tail or something a couple of times but this part over here not really um so i think we'll stick with our usual path today so a long time ago you used to run through the park right yeah, instead yeah. before they completed the trail between south uh, park and yeah, and the road over yeah, here I, this, I would come down just like i do now and just come up to um, down there before the bridge. right you over here right, at this right entrance right. to the park like down here somewhere yeah this this is it right here. yeah that right there you'd enter it there and I guess come run through all the way around and I would literally run the entire uh, everything right turn back and that was about the equivalent of the the 5k uh, the whole thing sure i don't think don misses the muddy days over here too Why, much yeah the, the trail was pretty good but uh some of the eroded spots were bad and this this right here there's parts of that that really get wet right it was more of a mud thing after a rain you yeah. couldn't count on the the path being uh That's friendly right. to run on i guess yeah. all right like i said this is persimmon path here well, that's new. I've never seen no one. Yeah, it doesn't look very old, for, even for treated lumber. <laughs> I used to bring the kids over here. Um, this is not a wildlife refuge or anything, so they would get down in the water bed and throw rocks and splash puddles and, you know, do what kids do when they find a place to get yeah, their Yeah, and I did wet. that before we lived over here. That's how long ago that's been. <laughs> yeah, well, this park has been open for 20 plus years. I mean, we're going back uh, when I say I was running here that was like in 2005 yeah this is just basically saying you can still see evidence from Hurricane Fran in 1996 throughout the park but uh, erosion down uh, large down trees that kind of thing that was a nightmare seven days without power for me over in Willow Spring I was in Hawaii. I didn't notice. We don't let Don travel out of the country because we have horrible things happen when he does that. <laughs> like that. So Hummingbird Trail goes left and right, but I happen to know that this just basically takes you back to the bathroom yeah. parking lot area and yeah. you, would, you would have a very short hike if you went in that direction. Whereas this gets us down to the long way around to this largest bridge over here, which, like I said, is the major water spot and crossing in the park. Yep, erosion. Thank goodness for the tree roots. You wouldn't want to take them up, as Don pointed out to me when we were over at um, uh, Raven Rock State Park, because the tree roots are all that's keeping that from eroding even uh, more than that. The water's up, of course, I mean, but it's really up. I can just tell. Now the sad thing is, and it is very sad, I think, is that there is privet all over this park. And there's English ivy over here too, no offense, but those are not native plants and they, they take over. Um, this park is 100% overrun with Japanese privet or Chinese privet. Over, yeah, overrun with privet. The birds eat the seeds and they carry it everywhere. And um, this is why Don has to work so hard to keep it out of our yard. Because, I mean, there are volunteer groups that come in here and they um, pull it up and try to pull it back. But it's once it gets started like it is here, it's just no really getting rid of it. Yeah, you know, I really should get out and walk over here more. Really should. It's okay. Like I said, the water's pretty high. 
yeah, well, this is all that from that runoff still. But it, there's usually water in it all the time. It's just that this is particularly um, uh, a fair amount of water. But I've seen it to the point where it's come up to the bottom of this fridge. Right, well, I'm sure if we'd have come over here right after the six inches. Yeah, well, you can see right here. It would have uh, been... That right, that sandy soil gets deposited when the yeah. when the water's that high. Yeah. Like I said, we'd be walking underneath the uh, high power lines. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a situation where sometimes you don't appreciate what's right in your own backyard. That and the, you know, the foliage in here is just like looking out in our woods, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm just, you know, thinking we should come more often. We can do this part today and come back and maybe go the Creekside Trail another day. I want to leave Dawn enough time to run and get back to the house while it's still plenty light out and people can see him. Although he has on a red shirt today, so... Because this is another one of those spots the water comes over the top of this. Right, obviously. You see the silt up there, the sand again. There's quite a few curves here as it progresses back toward the parking lot. I guess this is one of those parks where if they didn't do stuff to help it, pretty soon, a uh, year or two, the trails would be washed away and you probably couldn't, you know, enjoy it over here. Yeah, I think this right here. I think that culvert's new. I don't remember that. Or it's more exposed now, one of the two. Yeah, but I think this is the creek by our house. This is where it comes down. Oh, I totally agree with that. So every time our creek is roaring, we know this one down here is too. Follow that. Tributary. Yeah, you get, get back up to our house. That's probably true. Yeah, there's too much trash down here. I think they have a volunteer sign up once a year where they come in and they try to clean. The only reason why I don't volunteer for stuff like that is because I'm so allergic to poison ivy and... The mosquitoes will just cart me away. I think there's other ways I can help society besides coming down with poison ivy and being miserable. So that chair isn't something somebody came and threw in here. That chair is something that got washed off in one of the deluges of rain that we've had, uh, most likely. I don't think people really leave their trash in here. I think that, you know, this is a really a spot where a lot of water runs off to and... Sometimes it carries stuff with it, but the park has always had, you know, some more trash than you would want to see while you're out in nature. So maybe that's why I don't come as often as you might think. And Don's just saying they're going to have to do something over here or you're not going to be able to get past it anymore at all. Yeah. I wonder why they put those because there's one at the street up there. Right. I wondered why they did that, now I see. I thought it was funny that they barricaded it like that. Yep, several bat boxes in the park. We have one out by our carport. I uh, can't say for sure if we've had any visitors. However, we have had uh, bats in the eaves of both the house and the uh, And the, the attic and the uh, the house and the garage attic. <laughs> they like the eaves. We're scoping out the trail that would take us closest to our neighborhood. Don says this looks like the unofficial way. <laughs> like I said, this is not a wildlife refuge, so they're not too particular about you walking off trail down here. Well, if I ever walk back over to the environmental park on foot, instead of going out the carport and across, I'm going to come through our backyard into this cul-de-sac and down over here this way. It's a much easier walk than I remember going uh, 
down that lower route down there. Yeah, well, a nice day. It is. So we're hearing all the traffic on US Highway 401. Um, thankfully, we don't hear that at our house. There's enough woods and stuff. Yeah, well, at least when we're kind of blocks it. Yeah, down. I mean, even when I'm outside, I don't hear the traffic. But we're close to it now, and uh, we can certainly hear. I was commenting that the Harris Lake County Park near the cooling tower for Sharon Harris is snow cars out there. It's very quiet. Yates Mills loud. Lake Lealer is. Yeah, we're just disturbing a bunch of possums and raccoons. And certainly seeing the environmental park over here, you guys can understand why we have so, so many possums and raccoons and probably stray cats. I have to say there are a good number of benches in the park, more than at Sharon Harris. So if you want to come out here and just sit and watch the wildlife, you can't you should be able to do that no problem. I asked Don how far was it from that holly tree to 401 and he said maybe a couple hundred feet. Not, not far. Not far. But um, when I first came, moved here in 1989, probably in 1990, I came all the way down here. There was no park, there was no trails, there was no nothing. And I came all the way down to the point where I saw... The guardrail? The guardrail in 401. And there was a tree, a big tree across the, that you could use for a bridge. So uh, I thought better and did not w go across the tree. <laughs> but uh, I always meant to come back and do it. Uh, but I did not, I never did. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of place you come with your dog. This is like perfect. Maybe when it's just not quite as fast, but I think uh, large dogs would have uh, a field day of fun over here. Where Ellie and Blue when we need them. Don says the big tree. I'll leave you to it. He says it. So you take a picture for me. I can't be guaranteed there's not poison ivy. I haven't seen any, but obviously all the leaves aren't quite down yet. And as we've established before, I'm highly allergic to poison ivy. Don, as far as we know, is not allergic to poison ivy. I uh, know that's probably not it, because we're talking 30 years ago. But there's a couple big tree trunks across the creek here. And 401 is right there. I never got close enough to actually see the culvert under 401. Um, because like I said, uh, it was uh, pretty thick on the other side like it is now, and I was really close. But uh, yeah, uh, if you were the adventurous type, you probably could make your way to those, well, I'd probably just cross here, but um, you could get across, uh, walking across those logs, and um, you could probably get up to 401 there. I mean, because 401 is just... Maybe the car come by. Where's the car? Here we go. You should see the flash. Yeah, there it is. I um, am in the middle of the creek here. I jumped uh, from the bank to this gravel thing, and I'm going to go back the other way now. Hopefully my phone will not be in the creek. Yeah, well, the thing is, too, it's actually a little ways around to go all the way down there, pick up the trail, and then walk over to get back, you know, over to here. Yeah. I mean, not super far, but it's yeah, well, more I'm, than nothing. Yeah, well, maybe someday they might replace this bridge. They need to, obviously, this is always going to be an erosion problem. It's going to go away. But I guess if I was going to put a bridge, I'd put a bridge down there. And uh, if I was going to... Because the same issue here is going to be down there, so you might as well. It would be a nicer loop if you put it down farther. Farther, because this is sort of like not in the middle, like two thirds of the way around. It's close to the park. middle. Yeah, it's close, but it's not really. In the well, for all we know, Donnie, as we walk, maybe there's another bridge in this direction, and that's why they didn't replace that one. I don't know. No. We're going to go across the bridge that we just we got here. We got here on. Okay. There's only two bridges. 
Well, the third bridge is up there by the, um, the the car bridge, but that bridge doesn't go anywhere. It just, and in fact, it may not be there anymore. It probably got washed away too. But that bridge just crossed the creek and then bang, you stop. Yeah. The tra they, I think they originally intended that's where you were going to join up with the, the walking path up to South Park, but they never joined they never, it. Never. Yeah. Somehow there's some disconnect between disconnect. the environmental park and the Jeff Wells Trail. Yeah, I'm sorry, Donnie, but the next time I hear about the cleanup in the park, I'm sending you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> I mean, not that you don't already do enough in our cul-de-sac and other places. And yeah, well, down by the bridge, sometimes Don has stopped with a couple of Walmart bags and picked yeah. up bottles. So. No, I, I would, I would, I would come down and give a hand, and try to clean up the place a little bit. It's not that bad. It's not that bad, but there's obviously some stuff yeah. that when we've had these floods that have ended up down here. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So Ruby's basically, you can sort of see the red up there. Yeah. Um, we're making a little circle just below the parking lot. Yeah. And um, wow. Huh. I'm guessing that was for tobacco drying at some point. Um, at Halloween every year, except for this year because of COVID, they have a haunted trail out here. And people spend like a week decorating and then a bunch of people, it's free from the town, a bunch of people that like to dress up come out here and they have a less scary and then they have a full on scare. <laughs> and we've never come, but... Um, you know, I guess I had hoped when I had boys that were teenagers, they would be inspired for the scare and I'd get to come to it. There's always next year. Get Michelle and her family over here. I think it would be a lot of fun. I think they in particular would enjoy it. That's what I'm going to shoot for. COVID free. Next Halloween, Michelle's family, Don can drop us all off. Sounds good, sweet. There's Ruby. I'll wave at you at South Park. Right. Um, I've uh, now changing from hiking to running. And I'm going to start my run now. And I'm going to go a um, different way since I don't get the opportunity to come up this way. I'm going to cross right here onto the sidewalk, go through those new subdivision or those townhomes and wind around and go up Pick the trail. up the trail. Yep. yep. So we'll see. I'll run it my route effectively backwards, backwards today i'll meet you at south park i'll okay. wave at you over yeah. there well it'll it'll probably be 15 minutes i probably. know i can play mm, pokemon that long no problem we we're trying to convey and may or may not have done a good job is that the environmental park does not hook up particularly well to the trail coming out of south park now they just recently put in these townhomes and they put in the sidewalk so Don um, has a safe spot to run. It's sa safer than coming up from our house. But, um, you know, he's got to come up this way a bit, which he never runs down this sidewalk here. But this sidewalk's new. And like he said, up through the town home. So I'm going to turn around and come back to South Park, but I'll show you basically how he's going to pick up the trail. And they're coming along in here. I think it's supposed to be 70 townhomes and like 10 to 20 home homes. Hopefully I won't pick up a nail because I decided to come through here. It is a little, a little risky, I guess. There are people living here. It's a little rough right now, I suppose, but they'll, you know, four months they'll have all these townhomes done if the weather holds because here we have uh we have uh construction all year long it february is not such a great month but i think most other months you know the ground just never really freezes here Yeah, so I really think Don's got to come this way. I don't think there's a lot of other choice. And the home homes are coming in over here. Like I said, I think that one street of homes that backs up to the existing neighborhood. And uh, I 
think this is where Don will pick up the trail, his normal trail. Yeah. So he's going to pick up the trail there, and then at the back of those houses is where the trail he's normally on is. So maybe he's going to go 50 to 100 feet. He's going to pick up his regular part of the trail that he's on and then head that way up to South Don Park. Don said he's running his route backwards today, sort of, and he'll be coming out here instead of going in here. Wow, that was faster than I thought. <laughs> There's Stripe. The other side of the neighborhood. So maybe that's where he stays most of the time. Like I said, I think he's been eating someplace else. Well, if they take good care of him, it's totally, totally cool cool. He certainly looks like he knows where he's going over there. Well, I guess if he ever gets gone for too long, I'll know where to look. Just want him to be okay. Not happy that he's crossing this road to come see me, though, because, you know, we're like right over there. I got jerky, beef jerky, teriyaki again in the Instant Pot on Dehydrate. I just got done making deviled eggs, which we love and have multiple times a week. I've got a sirloin top tip something roast I'm going to cook for dinner. Yeah, so since we've been home, I've been out in the kitchen.